What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business, like the founders of P90X, Atari, Baby Einstein. Lindsay also knows Julie Clark, founder of Baby Einstein, and Julie not only talked about how she built up a $20 million business within five years, but also beat cancer twice. Uh, our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only. Today, I'm very excited. We have Lindsay Lorraine. She's founder of Easy Peasy. That's E Z. Z, where she's created silicone placemat products that suctions to the table, like the Happy Mat. If anyone has kids, they know it can be an absolute mess uh, at mealtimes. Yes. Um, so she makes it easy. We'll talk about that. And after leaving, you know, leaving corporate America, she built Easy Peasy into a multi-million dollar business in a short time. She's been featured on the hit TV show Shark Tank. Uh, she does all of this while raising her three wild boys and I guess four if you count your husband. Lindsay, thanks for yes. joining me. Uh, good good one, yes. He's being super bad today, though, and taking them to school. <laughs> That's and does perfect. Talk. <laughs> you know, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, my it. gosh. And thank you for having me. You know, I'm excited. And, and one of the first, there's so much, so many questions I have, um, but I have to talk about the versions because start off with the idea and how you got this idea actually into a reality. Yeah. So our story is so cliche, right? You hear or you dream of, I guess, of, you know, inventing a product. And that's really what we did. Um, well, I don't know. Story. Did you really dream of it? You never really dreamed of inventing a product, right? Until it yeah. came out. No, I definitely did it. I was like you had mentioned, I was in corporate America my entire career. So I worked at, you know, Fortune 500 companies was definitely I followed the corporate ladder, never dreamt, I guess, of being an entrepreneur or an inventor. I think all of us, though, you dream of like, oh, I have an idea. I'm turning yeah. it into something. Right. That sounds good to so everybody. If you know what you know now. Would you just stay in corporate America? Never, no, ever. I'm just, ever. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But, you know, because we'll talk about some of the challenges, too. Right. I mean, this. is Oh, yes. Yes. And I think they they both have their challenges. Right. It's it's really, I think, comes down to a lifestyle and and what you're meant to be doing. I'm meant to be. I and I found through this journey that this is what I'm meant to be doing. Um, And I'm lucky I found that. I mean, I think in corporate America, I kind of bumped up, up against the walls because I have that tenacity and that drive and standing up for what's right. And in corporate America, it's not usually what they want to be hearing. So when you decided, okay, I'm going to go through with this, this yes, product, yes. Okay. were you sketching it out? What, what did that look like? Or what was yeah. the reason? And I'll show you this to yes. get to it because it's like a plastic. So what, what is that for people? I mean, people I, are listening. She's holding up this. Yes, it looks plastic. like a plaster Paris type of bowl with a board underneath it. Um, That's just terrible. How did that get created? Okay. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we, we have three boys one night at dinner. My husband was out of frustration. You know, they were doing the windshield wiper and throwing their bowls. Someone needs to invent something. These kids can't toss and throw. Like there's gotta be a better way. That was it. The next day I was at work and I just, that resonated. Right. So I started, I got online and I just started looking and searching for bowls and plates and placemats and nothing existed and it's a problem that we faced every day at mealtime and so many face so i legitimately came home and i said brad i'm going to start my own company and i'm creating a product if anyone can do it it was just like that (laughs) that was when i taped a bowl to a piece of paper so and we have all this on pictures which is cool so i had a, a piece of cardboard paper and taped you know their suction bowl and then I um, and I cut little paper and made it into like a divided plate, no joke. On and I taped it onto a piece of paper. Um, and then I did, you know. And why I, I what I've learned from Easy Peasy is, you know, I am a goal setter. I've always been a goal setter my entire life, and mm-hmm. I've always been a hard worker. I'm not the smartest person in the room, but I will outwork, you know, anyone. Mm-hmm. That that's my strength, yeah. right? 
And so I bought a book on how you start your own company, uh, Mom Inventor's Handbook, which is a phenomenal really? book. Really? Okay. It, re it really is. And it should be Inventor's Handbook. Hmm. Right, right. Uh, and it walks you through, you know, looking for the target market and all of like the logical things. Yeah. I mean, your and background's then, in business though. So did yes. you know a lot of this already or? Yeah, you know, I, ironically, I, I went to school for business and I, and I have an MBA and I had my MBA when I went through this, mm -hmm. but I don't think, you know, it doesn't logically, you know, everything I learned in business school, I swear, I, I all you really need to do is start your own company, you know, to put it all to, to, to real life. Right. But I would say from stuff of like websites to search, um, to find manufacturers and, you know, that kind of stuff. And I obviously needed a refresher from business school because I forgot all that stuff. How did that get created? What you just held up? Did you create that or did... <laughs> yes. No. So this... What I is that made them. of? Yeah. It's Mom Inventor's Handbook. No joke. They um, gave a product you can buy and it's all these little beads. So this came... It came in like a bag of rice, okay. essentially. And you throw that into boiling water. <laughs> And it turns into this clear plastic. So then I took the clear plastic out and I rolled it with a rolling pin. So it becomes so, sort of like a putty type of material? Yes. Yes. So then, and then it's moldable and then it turns hard. So it's like, it's a way that the book suggested to get a prototype. Right. And I just spoke at a conference and I held this and all the Shark Tank people were like, could you have at least like cut it normal and made it pretty? And I'm like, of course, it just makes the story a little more funny. Um, and then, but the best part is I would show people this and you can visually see it. Yeah. Um, but I would show like people this and say, I've got this idea and I, I don't want you to steal it. And now looking back at it, you know, it's embarrassing, right? Like, That's it's, not, show me it's not bad. I mean... What did you do with it then? Who did you go show it to? How did you test yes. it? So I went, I ended up finding a local manufacturer um, that, I, you know, and I just threw the, through online, I found some guy and it sounded like he knew what, what I would need. And I, at this time I knew it was in silicone. I wanted silicone. You did. That was, yeah, that was just through research about uh, sustainable materials, high quality. You needed durable. to be like dishwasher safe. You needed yes. to be washable. You needed to, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so I started, so I, I knew silicone and then I found someone local. Um, so I called him up and said, Hey, you know, it, it looks like you guys make silicone parts. Could I come down and show you my, my idea? He said, sure. So I literally got in the car and went down and, um, nicest person alive. And I still, um, I still stay in touch with him and he helps me. They, they don't manufacture the product, but essentially this guy said, um, we're not going to be able to make it. It's going to be impossible to do this in the United States. Silicone mm. is so expensive because of all the qualities we just talked about, you know, it's dishwasher yeah. safe, doesn't wear. So he was like, but like, I'll help you. I can try to help you find someone in China and you're going to need nice. Oh, and in, in all, in all honesty, he's never asked for a penny. He, uh, I shouldn't say that if he ever, his boss ever found out, but he, uh, <laughs> he's like, he makes me CAD drawings, yeah. helps. And so he's like, you're going to need a CAD drawing, which, you know, they're 300 to 500 bucks. Yeah. Made me one on the spot. He's like, I can do them. I'm not very good at them, but I can, you know, fumble through it for you. And then at that point I had a CAD and, and this is a week right after having an idea. Wow. That's amazing. So I had the CAD. The so do you do day. anything, back up for one second, Lisa. So do you do anything to test this? Like do you tape a bowl and see how your kids play with it? Or you're just like, I'm convinced this is going to, filling a pain, this is going to work. Yes. Hold on one second. Bro, ask Dad for a safety pin. He can find you one. Yes. And in the laundry cabinet up top, there's a safety pin. He can find you one. Sorry about that. No, that's, that's this real is life. real world. You're exactly. I can't hear you. It's a box upstairs, though. Dad can find you a safety pin. Just go tell him. Um, it's pajama day, and his pants are too big. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so at this time, I wasn't testing because it was like a piece of paper and a bowl tape to a piece of paper. Hmm. But I knew enough, and I knew I wanted it to suction, and and so I knew a few things. I knew that. I, we struggled at home from the throwing of plates was a big thing, right? That every parent struggles. And probably you do, right? You're, you're girls are a little probably tamer than boys, but, but yeah, but they definitely get knocked over or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Throwing, so not as much. Yeah. Right. But just like that at the core was like, okay, this is a problem to solve. But for me personally, what I really wanted to solve 
was I did use a placemat and a bowl on top of it because I'm a neat freak. Yeah, we and, do too. Yeah, for right? sure. Yeah. And so, and then they, and then they would be like mismatched. I'd have like a cars placemat and a plastic bowl, and then, and it was so non visually appealing at all, right? And that stressed me out. I find. I found. So it's like this, the environment is stressful to eat in and then they're making a mess and then I can't even relax after because I have to clean it up because it's disgusting. Right. So like take all of those things and I'm like, I want something that looks beautiful, right? Yeah. It's like visually appealing. It can be on the counter. It can stay for two hours after dinner and I don't really don't care because now it looks like it's part of my kitchen. It's not, right? Right, yeah. And then I want something that works. Yes, that's it, Road. Um, and then I want something that works. Um, obviously, it needed to work. Yeah. And so that was coming of, and that was getting the plastic. And, and at this point, right, we weren't sure if it was really going to work. I mean, and there were so many stages of like, is this going to be feasible and all of that. Um, and so at this point, we weren't testing it because it was plastic. But I wanted more than anything, like the all-in-one to, to catch, capture the mess. Yeah, yeah. So then the guy that did the cats, he goes, look, I'll put you in touch with someone. And I'm giving you a really long version. Go ahead. No, I, lo I love all these details. Yeah. Usually I skip over this. No, um, this is the, yeah, this is the yeah. nitty gritty stuff. Yeah. And so um, this guy's like, hey, I'll put you in touch. This guy, he's, he knows silicone so well. He's seven year old, retired, does stuff in his garage for fun. This is I'm someone like, in the U.S. though. So. You in the U.S., okay. like 40 minutes away. I'm like, give me his number. Someone Literally, in their garage is an expert in silicone. Yeah. I, swear, I swear to you, right? Oh All real life. Um, and then I call this guy again in the parking lot. I call this guy and said, hey, I have this idea. Can I come over? Um, and he said, yeah, come on by. And so, and at this point I went, Mike, and I'm not joking. Michael's was right across the street. So I went to Michael's and I got a harder canvas. I got like a canvas you paint on. So it wasn't just paper with the bowl. Right. It's like a hard canvas because right. we ended up dropping it into a mold um, to make it and we needed something hard. Um, and so I went and met with this guy, nicest person alive ever. And he made me a huge mold and we poured silicone into it. And I had the canvas with a bowl tape to it. Um, and so he helped me and then we, we got the product. I actually might have it here. Um, can I go, yeah, check? go ahead. Go ahead. Is it going to destroy the, uh, no, you're good. The video. Um, you can give us a tour. The tour of the, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, there are more fun videos. There's, this is a great, I hit the jackpot prototypes. So, um, yes. And I this it. is still within like three weeks of is, you coming up with the idea. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty good. That was the first one. First one. Wow. Out of his garage. This guy you know, did a good job. He's amazing. Right. So then I'm like, oh my gosh, it gets better. We pull this thing out and it's like, oh my gosh, we can lift tables. It suctions to tables. Wow. Is that. Did he mean to do that or just is the material well, we, do that? It's it's a lot of it, – it is physics. So we knew we wanted it to suction, right? Because it doesn't look like anything's crazy on the bottom to make it suction yeah. or anything. We just got our utility patent on that. Wow, congratulations. Which a lot of people That's doubted. That's huge. It's huge. Well, there the were Shark some... Tank, I remember they were all on you about – stipulations if and we don't have to get in there right this yes. second but oh, i definitely yeah. want to hear your experience because um yeah they so, i don't want to say destroyed you i mean they just oh, ripped, yeah. it, ripped into you pretty bad <laughs> on the show yeah, i felt bad for you watching the, the episode originally i'm like oh i would not want to be her right now i tell you that see my eyes this is me i was like the whole time i'm like the shark tank the one my one regret and i guess it is it's who i am so people that know me is my expressions like that i just didn't logically <laughs> think i'm on tv you know literally right. it's I remember, raw emotion you know right it's, yeah. it's uh i was working a trade show once and the girl didn't had no idea i was on shark tank and she came over across the booth and she goes you know what you could never be on shark tank because you're so That's animated what she said. Well, because I was so animated. You know, she was watching me talk to people all day. And she's like, you were way too animated. I'm like, have you seen the episode? I was on it. And I got thrilled. You know, I got harassed from like Twitter people and really? I mean, mean people. That's like the other side. That was a huge learning experience of like cyberbullying. What were people and, saying? I mean, I was called any any name you could ever be called. Any, any name of, uh, you know, I was any name you could imagine. Uh, I got handwritten letters that my dress was too short. Handwritten I mean, just, letters? Yeah, that my dress was too short. Like that, before I even went on, actually, it started airing on the East Coast. And um, 
I, I couldn't, we had a huge party, right? So I had all these people over and all our friends. And I saw like two messages come in. And the only two things I saw before our party started was, where's this girl's pants? And uh, like her dress is too short. Did this girl forget to wear pants? And I was like, oh my God, I, you know, I didn't think my dress was too that. It was a swing dress. So it was when I like bent down and there were angles where I didn't really necessarily think about it as well. So anywho, that Who was the lesson. thought? Yeah. Who thought? Never thought. So back to the fun stuff. Right. <laughs> so in, in reality, we had this. Um, yeah. Put it on the table. We're like, holy crap, it sucks. It like accomplishes everything that I dreamt of, perfect, right? It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And then I brought it home and started having the boys eat cereal out of it. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, it's catching all their mess. And so then we ended up actually um, getting – we made I, – I found another guy, no joke, out of his garage. Um, I didn't like, know there were so many, like, silicone experts. This guy is a wood experts. Okay. He was a whittler and he whitt- whittles wood. I'm serious. Because I had this – and at this point I had someone in China – um, so yeah, what'd you do with that other one at this point? The, uh, the silicone one. What do you do yeah, with it? So, so I had that. I'm like, okay, we've, we've got, we've got a product. We know it will work. This is like, we're it. So now we need to put all the dimensions in and create the design. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's when, what you do with CADs, right? So we had CAD drawings that show the design yeah. and then we had our manufacturer, but I'm like, I don't want to get a prototype made in China. If I haven't even seen like the dimensions in the U S yet, mm. hence the wood whittler. So we had, we, I needed to figure out a way how to manufacture this in the U.S. and see like logically what it looks like with right. the dimensions sending over. So this person literally. So you could he tweak had, the dimensions. Is that why? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Lunch bags are all by the door. Backpack is made completely ready to go. All of the shoes are lined out, untied. Jackets are there. So I'm like, all they need is socks and to tie their shoes in a jacket. And I, I actually have all of their drinks and their breakfast like on the table. We could find a way to just throw that out the door and not make things happen. So. Right? Okay. So anyhow, back to reality. Um, and so I meet this. So the wood whittler, I go find this wood whittler and we go to get the dimensions. So then we tweaked it. So then we got the dimensions and then we sent the cads off to China. And then they sent us this was like one of the first ones. Mm. So right? how did you decide on the manufacturer in China? Was it through the relationship of that guy or do you just randomly search? I- I ended up randomly searching. This is another pretty crazy story. Again, I usually skip over all this, but I I found someone online and it seemed great. They were like, oh, we make Shark Tank products and, you know, the whole. They say the buzzword. Okay, you got me. Yeah. Totally. Gosh. And so I I, I don't know if I sent them stuff or whatever. And we were having a conversation. I am such a gut person, like a gut feeler. And was like, I was like, this is, they're sketchy. I can tell, you know, within a week. And um, what? Chase is not going to school. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, I got to get out of here. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. We go through this every day. Like, what? No, it's like a terrorist. It's like a terrorist think, negotiation. That with the message just that I was, Ch- Chase is not going to school now. This is crazy. <laughs> okay, so um, we ended up. So the gut feel was you did not like this person. Months, right? So, but, but it's, they seem so legit. So I get on LinkedIn. I get on LinkedIn, find one person with this company's name and reach out. I said, Hey, you know, I'm starting a company. Are these people like real? This is, and he's like, don't ever say I sent you stay away, wow. run from, run from these people and contact, you know, who I contacted. He said, they'll give you the best pricing. They're good people. And then lo- randomly I got another connection through my dad and he, they were like, they couldn't beat the price, but they're like, we know these people, they're good people. Yeah. And so that's how, I mean, it was just one of those random things. Love you. Um, so that so was the that. first one was who sent you that one? The one you ended up going with? With our manufacturer now. Okay. That, we use. that has become like part of our, I mean, they're just such phenomenal people. And that's been a huge, you know, I would say we got lucky, right? I, 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 I like to use the word luck because I think you create your own luck, right? right? Yeah. So we did get lucky and we found a manufacturer, but I just told you the backstory to get there. Right. Um, so but, how many prototypes now until you get your final your final version? Yeah, so like one, well, paper and bowl and then two, three, four. Yeah, so I mean like from the five. manufacturer. Like now oh, that you're at the manufacturer, that was the first version, right? Yes, and then no joke, the second version. And the second version? Is what we went with. Wow. 
And what yeah. did you want to improve on that? It just make it thicker or just so just like all the logical stuff. I mean, it was you could just look and tell like this base needs to be higher and this, you know, is all empty. Yeah. And so we made and I'll show you the real one. Um, and we made, you know, so. So <clears throat> tell me this, Lindsay, why that shape? Because there's also some I didn't realize until doing the research. There's actually you oh have. Gosh specific sizes of ounces for each of the bowls. I'm like, oh, that yes. makes sense. I don't know if I would have ever thought of that, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, that's been actually a really a really cool part of what we do and what I've learned on the backside and kind of what the mission of our, our brand is and, and what we stand for is we so we launched and I'll give you the backstory because it, it it's relevant to yeah, yeah, go your ahead. So once we launched, and we launched so quick. So this, you know, I just gave you like within. This was this was like two days. No, I'm just, this all happened in like a month. Yeah. You know, but like within six or six weeks, eight weeks, right? I had this prototype. That's amazing. Yeah. And so, and then I like went to LA and had a photographer shoot these, which is so embarrassing. And the bowls are even worse. Like they're so bad. And um, and so I. Uh, so within six months, so then when all this was going on and we were making this, I'm like, I want to launch on Kickstarter because yeah. I always wanted the community. I'm like, we want a community and this grassroots. And that yeah. was like, and it's so much of what we are yeah. now. Moms is such a strong community. Yeah. It, like the best thing. And that's, that's the best thing for what we do for me, at least what keeps me going. And then, um, and then I also, we, there was a huge um, kids baby expo. Um, in September. And I'm like, if we're going to launch this year, we've got to be at this show. And so um, we did them simultaneously when we launched. And that was six months from like having the idea mm. to having the product at a show. So we were moving fast. Did you um, decide on colors? How many colors did you decide on and why? Yeah. So colors were just, um, you know, and I'll show you this. I guess this is only relevant to you, but you can kind of see how all this stuff is decided. We, I just, you know, colors were another thing. I, um, cause I mean, there's a lot of, there's capital involved in making yes. a physical product. So yes. it's not like you can just go, Oh, we're going to do the rainbow, right? You have to pick and choose. Yes. And we still pick and choose all the time. I mean, but it was sitting here and you were doing that. How do you even like, decide? I mean, I could see blue and pink, right? For, for girls and boys, but you have other colors in there. So I'm sure there's a reason why. What was yeah. the first color you came out with? The one I wanted to do was gray, which why everyone, gray? Said, everyone hated gray. No one, everyone's like, gray's <laughs> not going to sell. No, no one's going to buy gray. Um, because remember when it goes back to the whole style thing, clear, I, 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 I see it's like right? contemporary. It's like a how you're thinking of more the house than the kid. Totally. So this product was definitely started from a design perspective, mm. being for parents, right? We, I'm a mom. I wanted something that was going to solve a problem that I was struggling with yeah. and that appealed to me. So yeah. naturally, everything in my house yeah. is gray. Yeah. That's a risk, um, right? I mean, kids are picky. Like if I put the wrong spoon with the wrong character on it, they will not eat. So totally. And most people said gray. No, gray doesn't sell, especially the baby thing. And it's we've, you know, gray's done really well in some of our other countries. It's the, our best seller. Hmm. Um, and so and then from a um, logically, it's so funny because you said blue and pink. Our, we have a coral, so it's not as pink. Um, and then the blue. I mean, God, we played so much with blues and pinks and finding the perfect color, which we found was the perfect color. How did you I mean, come if, to that? I mean, do you hold just, in front of your boys and go, like, just pick which one you want and they pick one? I mean. Yeah, I mean, I think kind of that. And then putting them all on the palette together and swapping out shades and colors. And if they yeah. look good together yeah. and. You know, you kind of are in the primary range, but you're not. It's, you know. So the first one was gray, though. That's what well, you we did them all together. So oh, did you did all them together. Okay. Yes, we did. We did them together, but gray for me. And so then we did gray, coral, blue, lime, and we actually did pink to start, and we phased out pink um, because it was so similar to coral. And the first product was the happy, happy. mat. That's what that was. And then why yeah. that shape and not rectangle or whatever yes. else? Well, this is actually really a great part of the story in a brand too. Is the smiley, the smile face? I see. I see. Is well, it's it's proven. It's it's, and I think it's proven to to be much more beneficial than we ever anticipated. Interesting. So the smile face, and we're still doing some research on this, but the the smi having a smile and your kids eat kids eating out of a smile hmm. helps helps with picky eating. 
That's just, interesting. Right? Just serving food on a plate. And logically, it makes sense, right? Like, oh, I'm eating out of something that's smiling at me. Um, <laughs> and then you take it even a, a step further. You look at the name, the Happy Mat. Right. And just having a name, a positive name with mealtime, right? Yeah. So most people would be like, Johnny, go get your bowl. Get down to dinner. But it's like, Johnny, go get your Happy Mat, right? It's already like creating it's a, a positivity. happy Yeah. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and so that's been more on the medical side. And, and I think I was going there eventually is like, we've, it's been huge on the medical and the special needs side. Um, and, and with kiddos with down syndrome and kiddos with cerebral palsy. And, and so that was unexpected. That was an unexpected benefit and, and something that's really what our heart, where our heart has gone within the company. So you go um, decide to go to Kickstarter. Then. Yep. So, yep. and what happened with Kickstarter? Yes, so we went on Kickstarter, and I think um, you know, d- trying to. What keep were you this- expecting? I mean, you, you got. I would say it was successful, right? I mean, I think you yes. ended up seventy-two thousand yes. um, with Kickstarter. But what were you going into expecting with it? Um, you know, I thought it would be a lot easier than it was, to be honest. And we had a really successful campaign and and got funded. You know, I think there is definitely a misperception about a, a lot of stuff in small business, whether it's Kickstarter, whether it's owning your own business of what goes on. And I think Kickstarter is one of those. I think there's a perception you put a campaign on and it's just it goes just viral. Explodes, right? And it's so. What did like, you learn? What worked and what didn't work using Kickstarter? I think the hustle behind Kickstarter, I, I, that's what I think a lot of people don't realize is, you know, it's just, an, it's annoying. You have to ask your friends and family and anyone you know. And so it puts you in an uncomfortable position. Um, and especially me, I hate asking for stuff. Like I'm a giver. I want to like give everything away and I hate being like, can you do this for us? So that was probably the hardest part for me. Yeah. Um, it's just the continually, you know, help us out, help us out. And it seems like a selfish thing. When you put it on there, you had already manufactured them? No, you have, we had not, but we were just about to start, but we really did. I mean, we are self-funded, which is cool, and we're still self-funded. We haven't taken any money. Um, how do you decide how much, how many to produce in the first run? Just, lo- gosh, logically, we thought, um, well, actually, no, we waited to produce. We waited to decide after doing Kickstarter, because that's why we waited to like give the first number to yeah. know how many backers we had, and we went to that trade show. Yeah. And so, we so you would to- not, you didn't send in, you know, send in anything until after you had some pre-sale orders. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Yup. And we waited, and that's why we waited. We waited to start, and then we waited, and we got the money, which was great. And then we knew, and I think we made like seven thousand that first run. And seven thousand per and they, per color. No total. Total. We and we sold out quick. I mean, wow. but that was a risk. And then they showed up all to our house. Um, what do you do with 7,000? How do you get them out to people? It was insane. So, gosh, looking back, I mean, we just do have so many good memories. That's why I asked if you just stayed in your corporate job. No. <laughs> I know. It's so much easier. It was easier for sure. Um, but just so much less. Physical. So they come to your house. There's 7,000 of these mats. How do you get them out? To? And the backstory is so dumb. I ordered like five thousand USPS boxes because I USPS gave free boxes to ship. You know, like the so I we had like before we even got the shipment, we had like seven pallets of just boxes show up, wow. which was the dumbest thing ever because now we use poly bags to ship in them because they are all in poly bags. But instead, we had to construct all of these boxes. Seven. Right? How many boxes? I mean, just thousands and thousands. At this time, though, we were constructing them and then keeping them in our house because we were just like dropping things into them. So our entire house was boxes. I mean, our entire living room, downstairs. I mean, we have videos. It's just crazy. So we, um, and the craziest part is we guaranteed, we were like, we're going to get these out by Christmas. And our- the, What the, time, what time of year is it at that they, point? They showed up at like December 18th. I think we got our shipment. You December think 18th. you were going to get by Christmas? And we, had, we, I swear, we ended up getting them almost wow, all out. That's impressive. Th- thousands a day. Did you not sleep? I mean, that not seems. Not sleep. We impossible. had relatives there, um, and so yeah, we got them all out, and you know, in five days, I think, because we were, we were still shipping on Christmas Eve, and then, uh, and then we ended up, we're like, okay, we're gonna need to move out of our house. Like, this isn't feasible, and it's just miserable, and um, and so then we ended up getting a rental house for a second. Really, a rental house, just yeah. for the packages. 
Like, just for the packages. But then my brother was doing fulfillment, so it kind of worked. I'm like, oh, he can stay in. And and then that just lasted for, I think, one shipment. And then we ended up getting a warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now we're going to a fulfillment center. So we've had a warehouse. Um, and now we're moving it all to, to third party. So... so- why the fulfillment center now as opposed to – because obviously you probably thought about that when you were moving into the warehouse also. Why did you decide on the warehouse? Yeah, and I love having the warehouse. I do. Um, I mean I'm looking f- pictures at it right now. It looks, looks really nice. Yeah, yeah. and the, well, our lease is up. So that was, that was one, of the, uh, one of the reasons. But I think the fulfillment center, uh, we've already transitioned some of our business over. Bye Bye Baby and Nordstrom. And – uh, it's been a huge, huge weight off of, of my shoulders yeah, already. For sure. So I'm so excited to start transferring everything over. And it's just, it's one less person I need to be accountable for, you know, bill we have to pay, you know, with electricity and all of those kind of stupid stuff. But just at the end, yeah. they know what they're doing. And it's just, I'm so excited. Yeah. So Kickstarter. Yeah, my dog's scratching me. Yeah. My, this, this is our life. Now my dog, little Yorkie. Come on in, bud. Okay. So you Kickstarter, Expos. What else worked to get um, the word out on the product? You know, I would say... What I other think platforms? I mean, you're probably on Amazon, I assume, and yeah, other... Yeah, Amazon. Yeah. We work on Amazon. I think, again, when I started this journey, I, I, I wanted it to be so just grassroots and, and people sharing because they wanted to share because it was a great thing, not necessarily because they were getting paid to do it. And that was an eye-opener for me about how all of everything works and the amount of paid placements Mm. that um, one are... You mean in stores? In magazines and everything. I think I didn't realize as a consumer that everything is paid, essentially. Right? So you, you know, you're reading an Ice Weekly magazine and it's top 10 celebrity picks and those are all paid placements. Yeah. Right? I could see yours going crazy if someone's like, oh, Julia Roberts is using a happy or whatever it is. Yeah. Totally. But and we don't we don't really pay for that though. I just I'm like, I'm not gonna pay I can't and it's and it's at the course, Have you had people reach out because they just use it organically? Totally. I yeah. mean we were just on we were Whoop, Whoopi Goldberg just fe- featured us on the view. Yeah. Right? And that's real. And it, again I'm the most honest person alive. I, like, I cannot tell a lie. And so I struggle with, like, I'm not going to pay for an ad that says we're the top celebrity pick. Well, that's, that's right. like, not it's real, right? congruent to you. And it's, like, it doesn't, that doesn't sit well. I'm, like, saying we're something and we're not. I'm not going to, anyhow. So we haven't really gone down that avenue. And that's an yeah. avenue that so, it, so many people travel. I'm not saying it's a bad avenue. It's just an avenue that um, we haven't necessarily pursued. Yeah. And so we, and we give mats to people. We give a ton of mats like, Hey, give us a mat. We won't pay you to post or share. And I, and on the flip side, I understand that people have platforms and that is a business model, right? They are using their platform yeah, and their yeah. audience. But at the flip side too, we have tried to get as much of people wanting to share or share a story yeah. or whatever it is. And it's worked. I mean, we've gotten a lot of organic um, features and, and sharing and stuff. Where can people find and buy it? So obviously um, Amazon, where else online Amazon, or offline? Oh, Amazon, our website, and then we're in about 800 or now, yeah, 800 boutiques, so independent retailers. Mm-hmm. And then we're in Nordstrom and Bye Bye Baby um, are probably our two largest customers. And then in 30 countries. Which was the most rewarding to you to get into? Um, Gosh, that's a uh, – I think from a – just a personal goal standpoint, um, you know, I'm a Nordstrom loyalist from a consumer standpoint, so that was special because I love Nordstrom. Bye Bye Baby's been a phenomenal account. I mean, the the people behind it's the Bye perfect Bye Baby, fit, yeah, perfect fit. And then our boutiques and independents, I mean, they are just such. They've been like the heart of our business too, and they're so the, the whole local businesses and shopping small. I mean, I've become a small business advocate now that I'm on this side, and. Yeah. And so it's hard to say like a total favorite because without the 800 boutiques, we would be nothing. And right. so, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. There's so many questions here because we can go the product route because now you have one product for colors, but you've expanded the product. And I also want to talk about Shark Tank, but, but stick on the product for a second. So when do you expand to the second product? Yep. How do you know? Well, and we came out, I mean, our product is so unique in this sense, and it's overwhelming. I mean, we're, we're overwhelmed every day because 
I mean, just think logically of a product. I can grab a pen or so anything. I mean, a pen's maybe not the best thing, but there's not a lot you could do with it, right? You're like, okay, you could make it. You can make colored ink. You can make a few different things, but with this product, you can do so many things. Right. And I mean, like, you can do a square face. You can do a, a face that doesn't have round things. You can do a smaller version. You can do a round version. You can do a bowl. You can do pet mats. You can do craft mats. It, you can do chevron print. You can do, I mean, it's, it's right? Yeah. Am I overwhelming oh, yeah. you just saying that? No, I, I mean, mean, it's the entrepreneurial ADD worst nightmare. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And that was really struggling. That was a big struggle for me at the beginning when starting and when you create something. You, too, wanted, to like, expand, could... you wanted to expand the product line. And like yeah. I was wanting to do everything. I was like, yeah. we're gonna do lunch snacks, and you know, you, you, <laughs> yeah, it's like you get excited. So, what realize, do you decide to create next? What's the second product? So then we came out with the bowl, just the logically. Bowl. Okay. Um, and then the mini mat, and it goes a lot of it. The is mini mat was third. Yeah. And okay. Went, and that, so kind of going back to uh, brand values and what we stand for. This is our flagship product, and I love this product. Mm. This, we still use this in our boys. You saw them; they're four and six. Yeah. Um, and we advocate for ditching the high chair tray. So, um, you know, our society. You saw our morning; it's absolutely chaos. And so, we actually getting involved with um, our speech and language pathologist, and just because she's on our team, the importance of family meal time and sitting down as a family and yeah. eating together. Um, and there's no need for a high chair when you have this product. And there's some phenomenal chairs on the market now that you can have your kids sit at the table with you with them. Right, 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 right. And so that's what we came out of the gate with this of like, ditch your high chair tray. We have campaigns like ditch your yeah. tray. Logically, it makes sense to have your kids sit at the table with you versus the high chair anyways. Um, and so that's why we really wanted to message that and the importance of that. Now, enough people said we really like using high chairs and we like eating on the go. And so this comes, this is the mini mat and it comes in like a reusable bag. Yeah. And then so that's the circular it. one. So it fits on the tray of, yep. uh, of a high chair. Yep, and then like you had said, it's sized importantly, so it's two ounces, two ounces, four ounces. Yeah, and again, that's just making products that are thoughtfully designed yeah. versus all of the cheap junk that's produced. Yeah, I could so, go on and on. Yeah, about. no, it's really interesting, and so I could see with Kickstarter and the Expo, you put in a certain number of products um, to get produced. How do you decide on the ball? Because again, capital intensive. Yes. Colors. What do you do there? I literally was winging it at the beginning. It was It's a joke. And now we have someone that does all of our forecasting. In. But you were winging I, it off of some something. Yes. You know, like, but what, definitely, what did you do? But I would just be like, this is an example. I would literally be like, we can, you know, we'll, we're, I, I, I probably said this. We'll just order like 5,000 bowls <laughs> legitimately, right? 1,000 of each skew. That, that's what I would have said. You know, like, oh, it's not, it's not that much, whatever. Versus Tammy now, who does all of our forecasting and projections and everything, she's like, a thousand of one skew. Do you know that X amount is ordered per unit per day and that, that how many days of inventory that is, right? Right, right? So then logically, once you start looking at that, you map it out. Right. But at the beginning, I mean, it was, yeah. and, and, and I was doing all of the forecasting. I was doing all of our accounting. I mean, I was doing so much of, so it was a lot of, you know, yeah. who cares? It's a thousand skew. I don't have time to like... Yeah. Put this on a spreadsheet and map yeah. it out. But I mean, even with that, like when you launch the bowl, there is no forecast because you haven't released it. Um, how do you do? You, I what's mean, what's the? I guess what's the process now? Do you throw an email out to your the list of people and you you do pre orders or how do you actually launch no, a new I, product now? Well, and back then we ordered fifty thousand. After that, fifty thousand. Wow. Yeah, which was insane. Because, so we ordered the 7,000 and then I was like, more too, I felt a little pressure from my manufacturer. Not now, I'm not knowing, like I'm getting a 50,000 unit order was like, now we order so much. But back then I was like, I need to show them that we're committed and that this is real. And that was a little scary getting through all those 50,000 and we got through them. Um, and then that was when we really kind of started taking into more consideration of what we're doing and right. then, you know, facing out pink cause pink's close to coral and making those decisions early on. We, we do stuff very quickly I and mean, yeah. that's the benefit of being small too. How do you launch a new product now? Like if you're coming out the 
pet. I mean, you have. I, I don't know. You've already come yeah. out with the pet bowl or whatever. Well, you know I guess what? that's a bad example because Actually, it's, it's the not pet, in the. But I'll give you. I'll give you yeah. an example of the challenges of the small business, and this yeah. is what I'm legitimately facing today. Yeah. And this is going to be kind of sad for a second. Go ahead. We want it the we is, want the real story. We don't want to keep it happy um, if it's not. So right, new products. We we just launched a play mat. We launched two new products: a book and a play mat. So we have yeah. a book. Which I don't know. Yeah, have, the play mat sure. is like the flower. Yeah, I saw yes. that. Yeah, and yeah. It's great for beating and sorting and playing. And so we just yeah. launched those. And then we have a book, which I have somewhere in this office, is I mean, I'm an author. Yeah. Um and it's fun ways to fill the happy mat, and it's written by our feeding and speech therapist, and it's yeah. beautiful, and, and that's on the market too. And so oh, here is one. Yeah, talk about the play mat. So how do you launch the play yep. mat? So, and we're doing it right now, and we have a lot of work to do behind it and that I haven't been able to get to. And so that's the sad part of the story I'll talk to. Um, and so I think, and then this is our book, which is mm. just beautiful. Nice. Right? Yeah. And so um, <laughs> so when we launch a product, we, we're lucky in the sense that we have avenues, um, you know, established avenues that people can help us. So yeah. our boutiques, for example, is – when we launch products, we usually give our, our boutiques or our independent stores first right or, you know, first go at them. So they can um, not only have something different than the, the bigger players, but they can help us promote it as well. Yeah. And so our boutiques just ordered um, play mats really v- very, very recently. Yeah. And um, and so they will be helping us promote it. And then you give them the first right. Just to have it. And yeah. then we do, um, like, they just got, we actually just probably posted on social, I think, yesterday, uh, berry mats. So we're doing purple mats, and it's just for specialty only. And that's, again, we try to uh, differentiate all of the channels because, and there's all this stuff to consider when you're doing your business, yeah. um, is, you know, there's Amazon, and then there's the mass channel, and then there's the specialty channel, and then there's your website. And all of those channels yeah. work very differently. They have different margins. They have different consumers. And it's challenging to try to make everybody happy across all of those, right? Yeah. Small people don't like Amazon and Amazon, and there's challenges with Amazon. And so that's the, we give the boutique some um, special colors. And then, um, in regard to bringing out a, a new product, we've got to do, do a lot internally. And we have yet to do, we need to, I have so much planning. And honestly, if you read my to-do list, it would say, you know, play mat launch. But I, and the sad part of the story is all I do is legal bull crap all day. Right. I mean, it's, it's legitimately all I do. All Literally all I do is defend myself against someone that's stealing from us, um, lawsuits, counterfeits, you name it, that's what I'm dealing with. And it sucks. It totally sucks. Last night I was like, this is just, this is sad that this is like the journey that it's become. When And it's a disservice to like all of our consumers in our community that like I want to be developing and right. creating. It takes and, all your energy and time away from what you wanted to be spending it on. And then it's like they're winning, yeah. like they're winning these big companies because that's what they want, yeah. right? In the emotional part. Yeah. But it's kind of impossible i mean in one lawsuit i'm personally named which is insane so it's like you can't really ignore this stuff right i mean this is for like a pro i mean you probably can't talk about it but um it's like well, a product lawsuits thing are, or? lawsuits are public knowledge okay so technically you could probably google and find a lawsuit on anyone i mean why would you be personally named in um so i think this is okay to, to share yeah. the story if you're, if you're worried about it don't um I'm just no, not like a prying standpoint, but from a someone's thinking like, okay, how do I protect myself if I'm a small business owner or you can't type yeah. of thing? You know what I mean? Well, no. Okay. So that this, this actually, this is relevant. And if it's fact, as long as everything's fact, it's fine. So uh, this is our scenario. This is my life right now. So we have a uh, product that's really well received, does well, <clears throat> right? We have a, we have a pending utility patent. And this is where, and I'll just, I'm going to give like, I'll, I'll give the bit, I'll give the real world of what goes on. Cause I had no idea this is what goes on. Right. Um, so what large organizations do, and this goes across the baby industry. I think it's shocking more cause it's the baby industry. You don't expect this like to be cut like, throat type of thing. You don't, cause it's yeah. like the baby. When I started, I'm like, I have kids, I have three boys. You just saw them. No one's going to steal from me. Literally. I said that out loud to people. Like no one's going to, I'm a mom. So, um, so we have a utility patent and the utility patent protects against the suction of the product. Right. No one thought we were going to get the utility patent. 
Um, and, and I had people from other organizations that were interested in acquiring us saying, you know, we've done some research. We don't think your patent's going to clear. We're not interested. And I fought to get the utility patent. I mean, I went to numerous lawyers to go to the backstory of like what it takes, you know, finding the right person to, to be able to write it and right. that whole process. So we get, so there's all this skeptic with our utility patent. So earlier this year, a, a mat comes out that would be violating our utility patent if it does clear. At this point, it's just a patent or an application. And, um, and so, and it was from a big company. This was like a large company. Like, okay, this is, this is a big deal. So we send these people a letter um, because with patents, if patents are published, so if a patent is published, it is public knowledge. So someone logically, and, and a patent gets published before it even gets accepted or registers, right? So you right. can see. So people logically make decisions. They say, I'm reading this person's patent. Yeah. I don't think it's going to go through. So I'm going to make the decision. They make a bet. They make a bet, right? Yeah. This happens every single day, which again, I didn't realize happens, right? Just fucking think of your own ideas. <laughs> so pretty like, much they go on there to get new ideas that they could implement. And they probably look at the success that that particular product is selling. Yes. And that's a whole, I'm talking about like, I could talk about all these different avenues of like the counterfeit thing, but it is, it's, it's what I'm, it's my life now is Kickstarter is an avenue because it opens up. I mean, logically it's like you look, it's people, all these trolls are watching young entrepreneurs that have good ideas that are almost there. And then they, they have take, the means and the money and the team right? to execute quicker. It's like this. Mm. Yeah. It's like a catch 22. Yeah. Um, and so my advice to anyone doing Kickstarter and we did this, like be ready to go, like don't do it when you're going to have year, a year production. Like you need to. So, um, so anyhow, so people took the gamble. So we sent a note and it's just a note. Hey, we have a published patent. So just so you know, this is what you're dealing with. Right. And then um, people, they started posting or companies, and this happens not just for us, we'll post on their social medias. In our community, right, we have 80,000 people now, moms, wow. um, start uh, commenting or voicing their opinion when they see these products, right? This right. looks like easy peasy. This, right. Again, we have nothing to do with this. This is like our community of consumers. Right, yeah. It's not going behind people and saying, you know, even though, trust me, I... I would love to. You bring it to their attention. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah. You know, but no, and I, I mean, it's like. You this didn't is, have to in this case. I just recently they posted mm -hmm. and um, I told people to stop doing it because I'm in like a legal hot mess. And they're like, you can't tell us what to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like these are moms that I don't even know. Yeah. Right. I yeah. know Facebook from where knows. <laughs> so all this is going on. And I kid you not, I get served a lawsuit. I'm serious. Um, against this company that that um, says, uh, if, if there's numerous different claims. I mean, and, and again, you But it kind of goes back to the community harass or, you know, kind yes. of an uprising in the community and they're blaming, putting you on it because of that. Type Essentially, of yeah. yeah. And then, I mean, and it's, it goes on to though, it's stated in the lawsuit that we have failed in the marketplace and had, I mean, like literally failed in the marketplace and they have a poor quality item. I mean, and, and so it's, it's so malicious and just wrong on a trillion fronts but that's it's like that's the reality yeah. and, and the legal system so that means you just have to lawyer up in that case lawyer up Ugh. and so lawyer up and um and now it's gotten so much ugly i mean i could just i, yeah. I could give you stories Isn't there like a mom like, in the community like there's probably like Ten thousand well, lawyers in your in your eighty thousand mom community. Um, well, and that's uh, in all honesty. So that, that I'm literally doing today. I'm going to meet with lawyers this afternoon to try to find a team and so we can litigate and fight some of this stuff and not spend a million dollars. I mean, it it will be a million dollars for me to litigate this yeah. case. One one million dollars. Oh I have spent college educations right. uh, checks. I write checks in there like this is what Brody was college, and that's when I go to a bad place emotionally. I think yeah. is, um, you know, when you it's a business. This is a business, but it's like, and I didn't do anything. You stole from me. You, you you're using my product, and now you're like you're paying. It, it, it's just so it bad. Make, yeah, and then but on now, top of that, there's counterfeits. That yes. Come out. So how do um, you how do you even control that? Gosh and. Uh, it's not easy. I mean, we've tried a few different things, and right now I'm like trying to create an infrastructure. Like, a how do you how do you even discover counterfeits? Uh, we've done so much stuff. So we discovered them a lot. 
again, goes back. Our community is so awesome. Our, our community of folks that. So counterfeits, they're actually putting your label on it or what? There's so many things. I mean, we get, I get messages. I got a message. I could pull up an email from two days ago of like a, a Chinese factory that emails me my product. I'm not joking. Like, Hey, have this mat. Are you interested in making it? And it's like, I'm the inventor of the product you guys are selling. I swear, <laughs> swear to you. That's oh, happened. God. Um, I I have people from all over the world send us messages. Whether it's, I mean, there's counterfeits coming out of China. There's, right. I went I went to a pet show. So this is another good story. We um, had had the pet mat, and no one thought we're, we're doing it under a separate brand, a separate name, everything. And so I go to a pet show. No one, we, no one still knows we have a pet line because we haven't promoted it at all. And I show up, and three hours into the show, someone's like, "Hey, um, I think you're this bowl, the Easy Peasy Bowl, because we had our product for our story. Is like someone's up there selling it." And I'm like, "What?" And I go up, this guy, whole brand, our product around pets and selling it, the Yuminator, and saying he invented it. He won an award at a pet show. I'm not my invention, the Happy Bowl. I mean, it's crazy, right? And so that's a confrontation. I mean, I confronted the person, and now that's what I was dealing with last night, this guy. Because then I had someone from Austria, Germany, send me a note ratting him out, a random consumer. I mean, it's just crazy. Um, I mean, those are some crazy stories. And, and it, it, it's – so that's – I have to create an entire infrastructure. And um, we've had legal – like online agencies monitoring. Um, we've done investigations Jeez. at factories. But then it's, it's like the a, dark side. Oh my god, it's so gross, it's so gross. I could tell you, I could tell you so I many like, stories. These, I could actually listen to these all day um, because oh, okay. there's so many good ones of like of of stuff that society of the people behind some of these scams too, like U.S. So there's like the, the China stuff and all of that, but the juice of like what goes on, I'm like that's why I'm like there's got to be the story's got to be told of some of these crazy stories. How does that person in particular get away with that? Um, I mean, he got it far enough to where he's at a show, you know, selling it and telling people that he invented it. Yeah. Um, so now with him in particular, I mean, I could tell you, I, this is actually, this is hilarious. So with this person in particular, I always go to the core and this is the, at the core. I never understand this. Like I told you, I've never told a lie. Like I can't lie to like my dog, you know, like I, I can't. And so for these people to be lying, like not only lying, saying I invented this product, lying to everything they're doing in their life, whatever it is in their graphics and they're stealing our graphics. I, I don't, I don't understand how people live with themselves, right? That's yeah. like at my core. I'm like, how do you go to work every day and do this? So for this person in particular, right, that's where I come from. I'm like, how are you living with yourself? And so this is actually a kind of a funny story. He had just had a kid. And so I said, look, because I said, you know, legally. You confronted is, him at the show. Oh, this is, yes. We're having yeah. a conversation. Yeah. And he, and he says, you can sue me. Literally, he said, you can sue me. It's going to be years. It's going to be tons of money. And I'll just file bankruptcy. Literally said that. Um, and so, and I just sent that to my lawyer last night because now we're, we're dealing with all of this. And so, but to him, I said, you know, you just, he had just had a kid. I said, look, if anything comes out of this, I hope that you can raise your child to be an honest, good human. Cause this world needs so many more good people. Unlike a lying, you know, son of a bitch like yourself, essentially. <laughs> so then, then the guy sends me a note, like apologizing that he wants to work together and a picture of his kids. And you know, he's really thought about everything we've done. So for two seconds, I'm like, oh my God, he has a conscience. And then no joke, this is like last month. She, a week ago, I get a thing from a girl that's like, "This person, they're trying to just get European distribution, just you know, distribution everywhere, and you need to stop him." And she had his name as a bad man, and I'm like, "Okay, clearly he hasn't stopped that. Right. Email he said this kid was a total lie." Oh, I know. I love it. I mean, this is crazy, um, and this is reality. But um, so, when does Shark Tank come into play? Why? Like, what was the decision uh, to go on Shark Tank? I could tell you another great story if you want to hear. Shoot. Do you want yeah. to hear the other one? Just because. And then yeah. I got to plug in my computer too. I love sharing these stories because I don't get to tell anyone them to anyone. But this is actually a really crazy story. And this is the stuff where I'm like, this, this should be a movie. So um, oh, let me get to see my house. We get the grand uh, tour. We get the grand tour. It's, 
in shambles. Oh, um, so this story is probably the most, the, the craziest story out of all of them. And it, it, it's going to go into Shark Tank um, or is somewhat relative. So we launch uh, in September, October 2014, right? And I, no, November of that year. So two months after we launch. I get a note. I'm at a. I'm. At, I'm just. I'm just telling you the whole story. Do you, yeah. have, do you have time for this right now? I have. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Yes. Because you're getting like the like story that no one ever gets of like the the backstory to just understand the emotional. These are the and, best. Yeah. These are the best stories. If you have time, most, I have time. Yeah. Yeah. I am gonna have to get going after this. Um. So, we uh we are at a park. I'm at a park with my kids. I just remember this perfectly, and I get an email. And it's like, hey, I think, you know, I got my, from my brother. He's like, my brother, my mom's, a kid I played soccer with, his mom's friend, you know, one of those random people got an email and says, it looks like your kids and it looks like your product. Um, and I get the email. I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, it's Brody. It's my son. It's our product. They have mad. And the logos weren't even chopped out of it. But it's our Kickstarter video with... It's all black and white with me all in the background. And it's all voiced over. So it's like, are you sick of spilt milk? And it's me pouring, but it's someone else's voice, right? Totally photoshopped the video. And um, and then it's like, order your mat. It's a, it's a uh, direct response. So if you've seen like Snuggies, which actually is a company that knocks people off every second. My friend's going through it right now. Really? Um. So I get this and I'm like, holy, oh my God, what's going on, right? And this is like a, a month after we launched, right? So I wasn't expecting this. So I get home, fr you know, I'm frantic. We find the people on the internet, the server. This is just all a great story. So we we're, we reach out to like the server people. And I'm like, hey, this is my company. This is my product. This is my kid. You guys got to shut down this website. They reply literally with the person's name, uh, phone number, email, who built out the sites, right? They're like, this is the person behind it. And we'll shut it down. So they shut down the site. They gave me this person's name. I, I will refrain from saying his name on the show. I look it up. He's pictured with Kevin Harrington, as seen on Shark Tank, all over. He has pictured this person on the set of Shark Tank with people, right? I'm like, is this real, right? It gets crazier. So I get this guy's phone number. I have a 20 What was he trying to do? Well, essentially, they hired this agency called LifeScript. Like you could find them on Facebook. They have like millions of hours and sent out an email to thousands of people to see how many people would test and click and buy ah. a fake ad with our product. And it was called the silly mat, not the happy mat. Right. Then they were going to make a commercial. They were going to make a direct response commercial that said, are you sick of your mat? Da, da, da. So they did, they were doing this market test, which is how we got the email that they never thought we would get ever, ever, ever in a trillion years. Then they were doing this commercial, never thought we would see the website. They would have swapped out all the pictures um, oh, but, wow. So I've got, I've got a phone call, a 20 minute phone call of this guy that's been pictured with all these people, you know, just like, I'm sorry, everyone's hands been slapped and da da da. And just never, you know, they think this is like a mom that has no idea what they're doing. Right. And we're going to, so they were commercial. testing the idea to knock it off. Is that what they were yeah. going to do? And they, they were going to make it, they would have done a commercial. And then next thing I know, I would have been, you know, it would have been the silly map. Wow. Um, wow. And so at that time, though, right, that was a scary time because we didn't have a design pad or a utility pad. So it was literally like we can't do anything. Um, and so we called the guy and he took it down. He never did anything. And we never filed a lawsuit or did anything. So he's still floating around and just I've never done anything. I mean, when I was on Shark Tank, it wasn't aired. I, I did say that, though. I was like, I've been pictured here, you know, with people that have st stood on the set, um, you know, and knocked me off. But But at the end of the day, I think – and I realized this. So did you then decide I want to go on Shark Tank then? That, that had nothing to do with it. Oh, okay. That, that was more of just I was giving you when I was on Shark Tank set. Yeah. I gave that story of like counterfeit issues are real. Yeah. I have been, you know, someone knocked us off that it was actually pictured with you guys here. Right, right. Um, and so, but I think, you know, and I think um, even me, I think I had a glimpse of even – even that, like through this whole thing, you think someone, there's like this authoritative figure, right? That has some, your better interest in mind or it's, whether it's with food you're eating or the legal system. 
and it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, right? But it's <laughs> and that's the shitty You're part. You're not hardened, right? You've been right. A, no, no yeah. one's looking out for you. No one cares if this person knocked me off, or no one cares. I mean, it's just no one. No one cares what poison's being put in your body. No one's watching out. There's. I mean, it's. So it is. It's like really. It's been a very eye-opening experience on a trillion fronts. And so, and my whole thing is eventually I want to bring awareness to this, right? I want this to be like, I, I've got all these women and these small businesses and sharing these stories. So just the consumers become more educated, right? Yeah. And so if a consumer looks and says, what, what, who made this product? Or this, this is sketchy. Right. Like that's my next mission in life is bringing more awareness to the right. whole small business side right. of the business. It's crazy. So... I know we're about out of time, even though this could go for another five hours. Um, yeah. What? Tell me before and after Shark Tank. Yeah. So Shark Tank. Um, so Shark Tank. In, in in all honesty, we. You know, I wasn't sure if Shark Tank was the right forum for us, and I and I was very vocal about that with the Shark Tank folks. Um, in the sense of. I, and we went on Shark Tank and, and again, this was all communicated. We didn't necessarily need help in the baby space. Um, we, and we didn't really need money for that matter. Right. So we, we are self-funded, but now we're cash flow positive. You know, we were, we had, a, you, we, it's been great. We're, we're a small team still. And I think we're going to do seven to 8 million this wow. year. Congratulations. And so, um, and so when we went, so when I went on Shark Tank, we, you know, I, I told them, we don't really need money. We don't need anything in the baby space. You know, we know Bye Bye Baby. We know all these people. But there's all these other opportunities for Easy Peasy. Licensing. There is a huge licensing opportunity. Huge. Mickey Mouse, Yoda. I mean, medical. All these offshoots. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then there's also, like, pets, right? So pets, all these other markets. And then you could put Disney, Nickelodeon, whatever. Yeah. So that's what – and I'm not an expert in those, those areas, right? Well, I guess Julie's the person to talk to, right? Yeah, from, no. the, from the Disney front. <laughs> no. no, that definitely wasn't going anywhere with no. that conversation. Yeah. Um, and so I went on. That was my, you know, why we went on. And then we went in with a high valuation. We we knew that. Yeah. Um, but I definitely, you know, usually when people do see the product, it is like everyone's lifting tables and it's this whole. So I was definitely expecting more of like, wow, this is an awesome product. You're gonna, you're changing lives, and this could change the world. But instead, it was all financial. Like you're insane with this valuation, da, da, da. and it was, and it was more of like, um, you know, I had a bad interview once, uh, an interview with a, a gentleman who, no matter what I said, I, I could have been the president of the United States, and it didn't matter. You know what I mean? It just, just didn't matter. Right. It's kind of that's how the way it happened. felt. Oh, just I mean, in this one particular interview, I'll never forget. I got something out of my book, and this guy rolled his eyes. And I said, I'm like, you you just rolled your eyes at me. You'd have no idea what I'm getting out of my book, literally. And I said that to the guy in the interview. I still got the job, which is crazy. Um, but it was like that, right? Like, you don't even know what I'm going to say, and you're already rolling your eyes at me. Like, Well, because you also don't know, like, from the audience perspective, you know, I'm sure that lasted for an hour or two hours, but they yes. only clip minutes. So you don't know if they're clipping the parts that are the most controversial or whatever the case is, you know? Yeah, I definitely um, – you know, I wasn't necessarily thinking about that out there. I was thinking, holy shit, this is not going the way I anticipated at all. Um, and this is just not right culturally. I mean, that was my main thing is like I – like our, our team is so small. There's six of us. We talk all the time. And culturally, I don't want – you guys involved, you know, like just so that that was the, really a main thing. And then just the way it, it all kind of went down, it wasn't the right fit. Right. Um, you know, but then it, so I, yeah, I got off and then that's pretty much it, though. If you don't take a deal, I mean, the but there was um, a positive side of things, right? I mean, it, did it make people more aware? Did it drive sales? Oh, afterwards? Gosh, yes, yes, yes. I would do it all over again. I mean, for me, emotionally, it was a hard 48 hours after. And that's the hard part I struggle with. Like when people are like, oh, I saw you on Shark Tank. I'm like, oh, God, you had to watch that, you know, versus being like, yeah, it was great. Like, I don't need to let everyone know that it was that's my it was experience. painful for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but hands down, but it was Phenomenal. I mean, just from um, brand recognition and pulling it through, you know, sales, 
and um, in the community, the Shark Tank entrepreneur community that we have. You know, now I'm speaking, we just spoke a few weeks ago with um, some other folks. We're on a panel together. And so then we get to meet and we've got this whole relationship and community of entrepreneurs. Yeah. So, Lindsay, I know you have to go, and I, I really appreciate your time. This is phenomenal. No, it's been fun. I figure we end with just a few tools, software you use to run the business. Like, I don't know what, um, you know, as far as the, the shopping cart or software yep. platform or what, what, what tools, software yeah. do you use? Um, another thing, too, is I would advise to entrepreneurs is to choose softwares and platforms all correctly. Um, and we did that from the start. We wanted a foundation that was all, um, you know, very cloud-based, but all just very efficient. Again, we're very small. Yeah. And and I want to keep it small. I never had a – my goal was never to, to run an empire and, you know, manage hundreds of people. Um, I work with my best friends. <clears throat> to backstory to this – to the software. Yeah. When I had the idea, we taped the bolts of piece of paper. I emailed my friends. It says big dreams. And the email is just a terrible email, but it's like, I've got this idea and I think it could be big. If I work, if we, if we do this, I want to work with our best friends. Yeah. You know, this is the dream. Can we all work together? And now we all work together. They're wow. like my two other right hand. That's amazing. Women. Right. So we, I mean, our team is awesome. And so, um, we have really efficient kind of back end systems. So, for example, we use Big Commerce as our, our back end okay. website. Yep, yeah. most. They've been great. We haven't had any issues. <clears throat> and then all of our um, retailers, our independents, order online through Big Commerce. And they mm. order, and we, we require a credit card for our independents, which is a little bit different, I think, where society's going, um, but not net 30 and POs. And so, again, right. Right, you take away 800 people that would be sending in like POs paper, and you make them order online. It it creates a very efficient, more effect. efficient, yeah. I mean, it's so logical. Yeah. Um, and so that's how we kind of do the ordering shopping cart. We back we used uh, Big Commerce and then Stripe um, as our shopping cart, and mm -hmm. then QuickBooks. QuickBooks Online has been phenomenal. Yeah. So they were, we were not only from a they manage all of our stuff, but from a small business, they're huge small business advocates, yeah, supporters. And so yeah, we you were, have an interview, I think, at the some QuickBooks conference, I believe, like QuickBooks Connect or something. You saw that, yes. Yeah. So that well, and this was crazy. So QuickBooks, that was for their top ten. Um, they did a top ten for a Super Bowl contest. So they fifteen thousand businesses applied. They. Um, we were in top, we were top 15. No, we were top 10 out of the 15,000. Wow. Which was huge. And so that's, we were last year, we were there for the top 10. Yeah. We ended up not getting it, which sucked. But they, QuickBooks reached out and said, hey, we love your story. We want to, we want to produce a commercial on your story. That's awesome. And, and it gets better. They came, so they came last December, shot a commercial for us for three days in one of the commercials, there's a little boy with Down syndrome in it. I mean, they're just awesome people, awesome business. And then they aired that commercial all year. It's been airing on like Hulu and CBS. Wow. But then no joke, it gets better. They switched it to broadcast in this election. That commercial aired on CBS, um, CNN, Fox News, CNBC. I mean, every – I've gotten time. More, yeah. I've gotten more messages and notes and wow. stuff. It's still airing That's right amazing. now. amazing. Um, and so that's been awesome. So QuickBooks for our, our, all, all financials. And yeah. then that's really it though. We use Square, you know, for some yeah. of the credit card stuff. I've yeah. just started using Evernote Yeah. to just, I'm trying to keep better, better. Um, I do want to do a documentary or we have so much good footage and what about for like keeping track of inventory? Great question. We use big commerce a little bit and we were using stitch labs for a while which mm -hmm. is like a third party mm -hmm. um, facilitator but we don't mm -hmm. do that anymore because mm -hmm. i'll spare you the details yeah. of like just amazon it was amazon and we shipped direct yeah, to amazon sure. so i may have a good solution for you on that so yeah yeah so i'll tell you about that there's a yeah there's a software scubana that is um kind awesome. of fits that that gap but yeah cool send it over um uh, any other questions? No. I mean, I have a million questions, but I know you have to go. So thank you so much. Um, everyone should go to easy peasy fun.
dot com. Anywhere else we should send people, Lindsay, online to check out the happy mats, the flower play mats, the happy bowls, the pet Max or whatever uh, else. Well, Ono is coming. So Ono is the pet brand. That's Ono Friends Ono's. is the website. Okay. Yep, O N O, and it's and it's Friends. So Ono Friends is the website. Okay. And then I would say, yeah, just anywhere you're out and about, and all we ask is, you know, help spread the easy peasy love. And if you, if any entrepreneurs are listening, um, you know, I would just say follow your dreams yeah. and let me know if you have any questions. I love helping. Yeah. And if anyone has gotten to this point, it it's they've gotten amazing gems out of this. So oh, thank you. Thank this you. Is phenomenal. Well, let's do it again for sure. Uh, you know, I will, I will go deep. So ah, I love it. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank I appreciate you. it. It's been fantastic. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.